Nice. Well, here we go. Okay. Uh, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Hit subscribe, hit the like button, ring the bell, go to my social media, follow me, pay attention to this guy, you know? Yeah, yeah that Show guy. me some love. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm no. not on, am I? Well, you're, you're about to be on right now. My okay, guest today. For, well, fantastic. The amazing drummer, Mr. <laughs> Peter Dallas. <laughs> Oh, having fun today, man. We're loose today. How yeah. you doing, bro? I'm doing great, man. Yeah. Rocking and rolling, just kicking ass. Uh, shoot, this pandemic happened and not much the past, you know, over a year. But then four months ago, my phone began ringing off the hook. And I've been so busy with gigs and students and some session work and things. It's it just been off the hook. And and I, I'm just grateful, blessed and 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 nuts. I just I. I need a rest, but I ain't gonna take one. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like what it's like once it kicked back in, it kicked back in so hard. Unbelievable. Know? Yeah. Really. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that's what's that's what's happening, man. And uh, late last night I was uh I was in my drum room and I was uh doing what I do every couple of months. I was uh dialing in my drums and my snare drums mainly and I was taking them apart tightening them up put new heads on everything it was cool man it was really cool got them all together uh Toby and Herbie my cats were in there making sure I was doing the job right they were hanging out uh they're both brothers they're uh new belongs kind of Russian blues and oh yeah oh they're just so cool and so anyway but uh, you know Robbie my girl is like asleep and I'm up till four in the morning right so I'm productive late at night so last night was really cool as a matter of fact um i brought a snare drum oh snap yeah i brought a snare drum that i worked on i worked on all three of them my my go-to this isn't a head drum case which i i endorse all this stuff uh which means i love it and the companies are great and their service is great so a head products are fantastic and their cases are just the best so anyway here's one of my three go-to snare drums and I'm a DW guy I play DW because uh, D DW is the very best the Rolls-Royce of drums and the other thing is I can crank the stands down the drums I can crank them down there's no pop metal I can I can tighten everything down and it doesn't strip yeah or mess up and also I play 9,000 pedals, the double pedals. They don't break. On gigs, I just, I can't have anything breaking. I love the 9,000s. And I, absolutely, right? Oh, and yeah. And I just pull them out of the box. I don't even adjust them. Yeah. I just kind of tighten them a little bit here and there. And out of the box, I just play them. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. That's it. So anyway, this is, this is an edge snare drum. This is one that has the, uh, you can see right here, it's got the uh, oh. sawtooth skull. Okay, hand painted lacquer finish. Okay, this is rad. And and we've got okay, mine are custom made. They're eight by fourteens deep, and we've got a brass hoop and then a ten ply. Okay, maple, and then another brass hoop. So when I take these heads off, these hoops, the whole drum comes apart. Oh wow, so, the whole entire yeah. big chunk of it, huh? Well, yeah, I mean these hoops come off. They're they're not glued or anything. Okay. So it's very interesting. And the thing is is the brass to me, it makes it so it's popping and then the wood gives it warmth. So I can crank these up and they they have a super deep but rock spanking snare drum sound. So anyway, last night I put on what I use Pro Drum Shop, my boys in Hollywood stand and Jerry, and, uh, and I put uh, new heads on. I use Remo pinstripes, and they're coated. Okay, so I did that, and, um, and then polished them up and everything. And uh, so, yeah, I wanted to uh, show you the snare drum because I have three of these. They're all identical, and they, they're killer. And, they're, and so, anyway, all excited about that. DW makes great products, oh boy. man. Great products. And then I brought um, you, I endorse ah. Peisty. Yeah, and I play PST 8s. They have a really great finish, and they're kind of a budget Peisty symbol. Yeah. All right? And um, But I love them. They sound great, and they also have a Sound Edge hi-hat, which is what John Bonham played and kind of made famous. The 2002 Sound Edges in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, the Peisty sound edge was it so pst8s are awesome and i i autographed this for you so you can sell it for very little money on ebay <laughs> if you get tight with a buck that's beautiful man yeah and it says big thanks jason 
for the best mixes and drum sounds ever because you've been doing my sounds forever in clubs around town yeah i've known you for quite a while mixing yeah, your bands. i think yeah. about 12 years now yeah easily yeah and uh so every time it's fast and right on the money your sound checks and well, then when you. i'm live it doesn't change it doesn't you know a few hours later you do the show and it it changes a little but you always compensate and make it sound great i don't have to do anything live my mixes are killer i don't have to say hey can you bump this up or bump that up you've always got it under control and i appreciate that so so anyway you're my fave sound man ha and there it is i love it rock so, with the r a w k you <laughs> I'm a drummer. I have a limited vocabulary. <laughs> so it's just sort of, uh, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a Peter Dallas thing. I'm, I absolutely love it, my friend. Yeah, I, Thank I, you so much. I didn't excel at like spelling. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so here you go, bro. And it's oh. a Peisty PST8. Dude. Killer. This one is cracked. So that's what makes it so special. I love you it. Know, when they're have cracked, to put this in a frame on the wall. On the, the wa sure. The big wall. Of or you can just stuff stick it on the wall. You can put a nail in them. Just oh, put maybe stick. I'll try doing People that. do that, too. Yeah. So, yeah. And I then I'll get this out. And then I brought you a, a pair of right autographed there. Peter Dallas drumsticks, Vader is my company okay and these sticks are awesome and uh these are the los angeles 5a's and i also use 55 a's which are a little bit longer and a little wider so anyway i autographed those to you jason so i once again if you you ever need to you can sell them for very little money on ebay and i, pre <laughs> I present these to you vader drumsticks killer this, i've been with vader for 12 years fantastic i sticks. love vader so my gift to you oh i'm guy you got brought okay. presents today man i yeah. just freaking love it look at that <laughs> thank you so much you're man. welcome hell I yeah i freaking love it man <laughs> yeah that's gonna definitely end up on uh on my big uh drumstick while i'm starting uh, i gotta all right. I gotta get a nice mount that with I all those famous shopping. guys right dude i got some good ones cool. man over the years cool. i worked with some interesting people so i was surprised i i've been collecting them and putting them in a, a jar you know and just mm -hmm. like until like i couldn't fit drumsticks in it anymore it's nice. like i gotta do something about these they gotta go up on display and I started digging through. I'm like, man, there's some pretty amazing uh, drummers in there. I was very surprised. All right. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to putting these up as well. Yeah. With all the other drumsticks I've been collecting, signed by all the amazing awesome. people I've gotten to work with <laughs> in my life, man. Well, I'm honored to be a part of that collection. Oh, bro. it's I, You deserve to be a part of that collection, man. Thank you. So. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, you're you're killer, man. I love your new setup, by the way. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have to do anything. I bring in a few XLR and I just plug them right into your shells. Everything is mm -hmm. pre-miked underneath the heads, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, we got uh, those May mics in there that Stan and Jerry put in over at ProDrum for me. Okay. During that year of pandemic, I thought, I better get ready for the, the onslaught of work that's going to happen when this ends. So I began tightening up my game a bit. And, uh, yeah, those mics are killer. Sure mics in the drums. Plug them in. Uh, nice kick drum Beta 52 in there. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you're digging them, man. Dude, it makes life so convenient. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I just, I just absolutely love your new set. It looks great. It sounds great. <laughs> yeah. And How's I, the snare sound? Because I'm always curious about those mics and the snares. Because that's a touchy subject with you know, yeah. a lot of cats like below and above, and you know, and that's fine too. But, you know, plugging in is good, too. And uh, so I wonder how you like the snare sound. I dug that. the snare sound. I thought I got good snare out of your out of your drum kit, man. Good. And, uh, you know, the only one I really had any uh, yeah. issue with was maybe the, the kick drum, because I'm just used to different kick drum microphones. Mm -hmm. But I EQ'd it out oh, you to did. where I, I mean, I liked it. You know? Yeah, because it's a Beta 52 where, okay, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Is that the, a Beta 52 in there, really? Yeah, and it's not. So so the Beta 52, the sweet spot is at the at the front where the head is, right? Yeah. Is that the sweet spot on those? Well, I mean, I, I usually pull them back a little further out where, like, the, the hole is or the air hole is where yes. you put, can put a microphone in the outer head. Yes. But also, yeah, closer to the beater is very nice, you know? You don't have to gate it as much. And Well, I thought maybe... The sweet spot was where the head is, where you pull it out, where the hole is. That's the sweet spot on those, right? Yeah, yeah. Usually for the Beta 52, especially if you have like a, an inside kick microphone that you're rocking as well. And so so my Beta 52 is kind of in the middle now. I've got a long um, arm on yeah. the mount. What I'll do when I get home is I'm going to 
I'm going to move it more toward the head. You think that mm-hmm. might make it a little bit the front head more toward? Uh, yeah, the front. I might even say move it closer to the beater head. Maybe put oh. it, maybe try putting it right up on the beater. Right. And uh, and seeing how that works. Why don't out I try that and then you can let me know? Yeah, maybe when we'll we're mess down with at that it. Rockstar Bar. Gig. Yeah, down at Rockstar Bar. I think okay. we're working together on Thursday. Actually, okay. coming up, doing then, the Rockstar Karaoke thing, right? Great. Then I'll move it toward the the head, and then you can let me know what you think if it's better. Yeah, we'll have a little fun with we'll it. Move I it around it. a little bit and find this a better sweet spot for it. Yeah, okay. that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, th- you know that putting it right in the middle is. Uh, the, it, it gets like inherent frequencies that kind of collect at that, that space as opposed to like the lower okay. frequencies on the outside or the, the better attack that you'll get on the inside. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll try them all out. Okay. Man. We'll move it around and see what uh, – we'll leave it flat <laughs> yeah. and we'll just start shifting the mic here and there. And Sounds good. And then and then if, if that's play. good, great. And if not, then the next t- karaoke, then we'll I'll move it somewhere else. We'll try yeah. to figure it out. Okay. Yeah, no. That I sounds we'll, perfect. I think mm-hmm. we, you know, we can probably spend some time with it just during sound check, man. Okay. And having a good time. Yeah, like, I can you know, have it slightly loose and just move it and, and you know, firm, but not totally tight. And I can yeah. just move it. And then you can go, okay, let's try it here. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And then you'll go, okay, I, I think it's there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm super into that, man. All right, let's do it. I'm super into okay, that. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we get to do, you know? That's why, you know, it's just called, you know, we're just playing around and having a good time with you life, bet. man. And you we get bet. paid for it for some reason. <laughs> I freaking love it. We got the best job in the world. I think so. It's not for the faint of heart. It's it's a no. tough, the music business is tough no matter how you look at it. And uh, however, uh, at the end of the day, I couldn't do anything else. So No, yeah. not, at, not at all, man. Like, uh... I always tell my brother, you know, we're, we're, when we're working together, we get to, you know, work together and do audio engineering together. And mm-hmm. it's just like, I mean, we literally have the best job in the world. I was like, if I could think of something cooler to do with my time, mm-hmm. I'd be doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, but I, I, I literally can't think of something that I'd rather be doing than what nice. I do now for a living. Very nice. It's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is gun. This is fun too. Hopefully, I get to do this for a living too. Yeah, this soon. is cool too. You know, for me, I'm back there drumming, and I sing a little bit on gigs, but overall, I'm just drumming, and I just love to yap. And so, the opportunity to yap with you here today, I don't get that behind the drum kit too much. Yeah, right. They, <laughs> they don't like to give the drummer I don't have microphones. A mic. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good thing. Who knows, man? You know, I think so. It probably is a good thing. <laughs> So, yeah, cool. Yeah, right I've been on. looking forward to having you on for a while, though. We've been talking about it for a minute. And, uh, yeah, it's, I'm glad to have you here, man. I think we're even talking about having uh, a couple of your projects come on as a whole and maybe doing a oh, jam yeah. and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. sure. So sure. it'll be fun, man. I think I got Sean Coos coming on. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. One of my so. favorite cats to play with. Oh, Great he's bass amazing. Player. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I, I've known him forever, man. Like, right? since I first got into town, he was one of the first people I ended up working with. Nice. Doing some studio stuff and recording a couple albums and stuff like that, man. And partying maybe a little harder than we should. But you know, Sean, he loves to party, man. That's good, man. Yeah. It yeah. loosens you up a little bit, getting the mood here, getting the zone. You know, I'll work and no play. <laughs> nah, I need a little bit of play. That's it, man. Yeah. In moderation, yeah. though. But that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So you have like a million projects going on now. Yeah, I you do. Got, you got what? Tiger 86, yeah. the Van Halen thing, the Journey thing. Uh, You're doing the Rockstar karaoke. Yeah. Uh, you got more than that, don't you? Bon Jovi. Oh, God. Tom you Petty. Uh, they're getting, they're booked up. We got shows. Yeah. Um, what's another one? Are you one? doing the Tom Petty thing with Les Warner? No. No, that's a different no, Tom that's Petty. that's a totally different one. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we'll be at Rockstar Bar in August. Yeah, I think it's the 14th of August we'll be there okay. for the Petty thing. Awesome. Yeah, and then we got Petty also. We got San Juan Capistrano at the end of August, which is totally awesome. Oh. We got Journey down there, too. It's a big outdoor festival in San Juan Capistrano in California. Oh, awesome. Yeah, at the end of the month. And so that's going to be bitching. And, uh, but yeah, I got all these uh, groups... Uh, Staying busy, and they're all quality. All the players are high quality. Everybody's like top pros, great attitudes, no drama, which is you know unusual, but yeah. in this business. But in Vegas, everybody is a pro player, and there's there's drama, of course, always. That's what bands are. That's what the entertainment business is. But but the drama here is is a lot different than maybe a lot of places because people are making a living playing music. And so it's it's just everyone, you know, there's drama and it's kind of interesting, but 
you know, the, the players and the, and the, you know, the lead vocalists and everybody, the feature artists on these shows, are, they're very pro. Everybody shows up. They've got their thing together. It's very cool. So, yeah. So with these tributes and everything, too, we've got all these players that we all know each other and we work well together. So it's pretty exciting to go on the bandstand and have no issues. Like, wherever we go, everybody's a pro. Like I did last Friday in Orange County with a Journey tribute, Journey LTD, Living the Dream. Ah, uh, living the dream. Kind of cool. And uh, so the singer thought that up uh, years ago, and it's like, okay, we're living the dream. And so we, we go do this gig, and everybody's on time. They're early. They set up quick. No issues. Sound men are all happy. Things happen quick. Uh, you know, knock out the gig, tear down, split, uh, you know, schmooze with the audience, and everybody's pro. So, you know, happy. Everybody's happy and excited. So, yeah, it's great. All, all these tributes are just great. Yeah. Yeah, I love those tribute bands. You were saying that you were doing uh, the uh, Van Halen on Saturday. You guys were banging, huh? Over oh, Rockstar Bar. That's a brand new one. It's um, me and Roddy, the singer, had worked uh, a few years back with uh, Eruption, which is a Van Halen tribute that Alistrata Oh, okay. I, I think I worked with the, the Eruption band once or twice. Mm, I don't no? think so. No, not, not a band? there. Uh-uh. No, and um, so Al Estrada is a guitar player that uh, has been with David Lee Roth for I think about two and a half years now. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. yeah then I haven't worked with so, him. So yeah, and he's he's a total Van Halen guy, of course, and he's the guitar player for David Lee Roth now. So he's he's real busy, um, with things, studio work, and different things, and also with Roth, right? And waiting for Roth to kind of kick in, which I think is going to happen very soon here on the Kiss tour. I think they're slated to go out with that. Uh, oh, next, yeah, next month or the month after might be September or something. So anyway, we had that. So we got a hold of Al because we had the opportunity to play at Rockstar Bar on uh, the Strip, okay, in Vegas. And Al said, "Well, you know, I'm not too into that, and it's understandable because he's been." playing arenas and he just kind of wants to do that so so Roddy and I are like all right let's throw something together so we thought of a name Cradle Will Rock and got Chris Cicino on guitar uh, we got a, a buddy of ours Brian Nussel who is from Fan Halen who plays with them full-time and um, you know he was able to do the show and have some fun with us so we didn't rehearse or anything and just went in and um, oh yeah there you go and um, and just went in and just blew the lid off this club. <laughs> and it was so fun. And, you know, we we had no rehearsals at all. So we were kind of authentic Van Halen. Like, it was, like, dangerous. But it was spot on. But we were dangerous. We were just kicking ass. And it was really fun. And the club was packed. We're going to be back there in about two or three months with another date there. Awesome. And uh, yeah, we're not going to rehearse and we're going to go in and do it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was really fun Friday uh, or Saturday. Uh, and uh, we missed you on sound. You were going to do it. Yeah. And then you had another gig to do. I ended up doing this crazy rave over at Area 15, man. Yeah. Like uh, that. every once in a while, they're going to put these huge parties together. And mm -hmm. so I thought I was going to be able to just cruise because, like, you know, you normally it's like a DJ and they don't need all of us audio guys at the same time to cover it. But then they were like, no, this is a huge, huge party that we're putting together. And there's going to be multiple big events going on simultaneously. And everybody was all hands on deck. Shit was wild, man. Wow. It was wild. Yeah. A lot of lights and oh, wild dude. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Outdoors. Yeah, there was a there's an outdoor stage and an indoor stage. Okay. So there was like outdoor EDM. With a huge system that we have, yeah. rock, and I mean it thumps, and then uh, and this fantastic lighting system going on, and our buddies, my buddy Jake Roper over there, and uh, mm -hmm. and our, my buddy Drake over there, just killing it on lights, man. Mm -hmm. Nice. And uh, and then inside it was like kind of like a trance like uh, right. concept, and it was a little more like dark and lasers psychedelic and like, yeah, yeah yeah video well, the weather walls. was really nice that that we had that little cooler three or four days there so yeah so that evening the weather was real nice too yeah it was fun yeah i was i was very impressed by the whole the whole event man mm -hmm. and uh, i guess we're going to be doing more and more of that stuff over there so uh cool 
Yeah, you definitely got to come check it out. I don't know if the EDM things you're seeing, but uh, it's, it's not cool really. To but see happen. I I haven't been to an EDM gig, so I'd like to go. So I'll I'll pop on out sometime and hang for a minute. Yeah, yeah definitely. It's worth checking out, man. Yeah. The place is wild. Okay, it's wild. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. And just the whole the whole Area 15 place in general is pretty dope. I like man. the name. <laughs> yeah, it's got the alien vibe. It's the opposite of 51. <laughs> yeah, that's it too. 15. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, it's got the alien vibe and like this big psychedelic vibe, right. man. And everybody's tripping on something when they come yeah. in, and just you know, I, I I think it's a dope place to work, man. I really like it over there. All right, yeah, that's bitching, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dude, it's it's been fun working with you over at the Rockstar Bar. Yeah. And uh, last one was, uh, I think I did the Tiger 86 band. We got you guys all dialed in real yeah, nice. Yeah, that then... was with Maya Cohen on vocals, and that's a, a cover band. But we do some awesome stuff. We do, like, Total Hold the Line and some some really fun, fun stuff. Uh, Bruno Mars, uh, Uptown Funk. That's one of my favorite songs to play. That's a great song. Oh, it is, isn't it? And yeah. it's slamming. I mean, it's it's like we're slamming it. And they're slamming it. Bruno <laughs> slams it. Oh, yeah. You know, his brother's a drummer in that band. He's fantastic. Oh, man. You know, I don't know if you know this, but um, you know the backstory on that brother and he was a cop? Did you know about that? Nuh-uh. He was LAPD. He was a cop in L.A. And Bruno was in Hawaii. And Bruno came over to L.A. to pursue music and live with his brother in Studio City, in an apartment. And his, he was an LAPD cop. He was out in, in the cars cruising around. And uh, so Bruno came over, and within about, I think, a year, maybe two max, Bruno got a record deal, got things going on. And he said, so, hey, man, we're going to go out and do some tour stuff. So his brother goes, okay. His brother's a really great drummer, right? So they went out for, like, they were going to go out for a couple, three weeks, and then the record began to catch on and catch fire and start crank on the charts so they were out for like two or three weeks and then he he said man we're gonna keep going you know a little longer right so he he called the LAPD he said man I you know he had taken some leave and vacation he goes man I'm gonna be out another three or four weeks you know and then after a couple three or four weeks in another six seven eight weeks um he called the LAPD and he said, well, we're going to keep going. And they said, you know, hey, either choose a career here. Yeah, you know what I mean? And he said, OK. And yeah. that's the end of that story. That's not you know, that's an easy one drummer. to choose right there, man. Isn't that something? Yeah. So that's so cool. And uh, so anyway, but playing Bruno Mars, you know, love that. Yeah, Tiger 86, a nice variety cover band, really great. And uh, so we did that. And um Journey, the Journey tribute, Journey LTD's already played a couple times in Vegas on the Strip at the Rockstar Bar. And then uh, we have Journey coming up the end of July here on the 31st. And uh, so we're going to do that. And uh, and then we have that Rockstar karaoke on Thursday nights where there's a, a prize and all that. And it's it's really fun. A lot of top talent comes in. You're, you, you're aware of that now that because you did that last week, I think, was your... Yeah, yeah, I first, went in and, and figured and or the week got before the, or something. Got like the it. gist of the no, it was last week. Yeah, oh, it was okay. Sean Coey. Yeah, yeah, it was great to see Sean as well. Oh, great! Yeah, I'm, I was sitting, I was talking to her about coming on, so hopefully she'll be on. She's cool. doing a, a move kind of thing, getting some stuff together, yeah. and then after she's done settling that down, she's, mm-hmm. we're gonna have her on the show as well. Cool, fantastic singer Dweezil Zappa and uh, Meat Loaf. Oh boy, and she can belt. Last oh, week yeah. I was like, wow, she had done our first one. I think four or five weeks ago was our first uh, rock star karaoke there. Yeah. And uh, the band's called I'm With a Band Rock Star Kara- Karaoke or something. And there's a Facebook page if anybody needs to look at it. And so anyway, yeah, we're going to keep up. going in Vegas uh, for a long time but uh, on Thursday nights. But um, but anyway, Sean, boy, that that she's a powerhouse singer. And we got uh, um, Drew Hart this coming Thursday from Heart Attack and uh, Yellow Brick Road. And so we have a bunch of, we have Cascades coming in uh, July 8th. Uh, He's from Ashley Red in town, and he's definitely a, um, you know, celebrity in town and a great, great singer, great spirit. We got a bunch of people coming in. um, So anyway, yeah, the the karaoke Uh, is a lot of fun. Sean's fire there. there. Neat. There's Sean. Yeah. Oh, there we are. Wow, the band. There it is. Yeah, it's a pretty Fantastic. simple setup. For, you know, you got a nice nice selection of songs to perform with. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, 
Yeah, that's great stuff. It, it's groovy, man. I really had fun last week. Oh, here's a good picture right here with uh, one of the conditions. So you guys do a... Uh, you guys do a prize at the end of the night too, right? Yeah, it's a hundred bucks, and people get real serious about that. Oh, I bet they want it. They're in it to win it. So yeah, that's fun. And um, that's awesome. Yeah, a, a guy, a photographer in town, who also has a blog that's really awesome is Gary England, and yeah. he's taken most of those photos that uh, are on those promos that like we're these seeing. black and whites right here. And uh, yeah, and. Um, so he he's amazing. And yeah, Glenn Gillardi, there he is. There's Alyssa Fur. There's, well, me. There's Alyssa Fur. <laughs> There's uh, um, Jazz. Yeah, that guy's name is Jazz. Oh, yeah, I, I saw him there last he's week. He's killer. And then Drew Hart was a... Uh, Drew Hart's amazing. Mm-hmm. Fantastic vocalist. I'm sure he was there as the host. Yeah, what night. an MC. What yeah. a great guy. There's Sean. There's Sean. Yeah. And the one prior to that was Fuki, who is... Um, Fred's wife, um, Fred Bensey, who's a keyboard player from, uh, who's been working for, geez, about five years now with Missing Persons. Oh, really? So that's cool. We got a lot of, a lot of uh, the local musicians have worked, you know, gotten some nice tour work. Uh, Sean is going to be out. He was out with, uh, oh, a number of artists over the years. Sean, for sure. Joan Jett, he was with for like, I don't know. Yeah, that's definitely years. his uh, his yeah. big one. He was with uh, Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. That's right. And yeah. he, boy, he's got that whole vibe. And uh, and then um, um, he's out with Katrina and the Waves. He's already done work with her over the years. So I believe in September he's going out with Katrina and the Waves for a bit. Oh, cool. So that's fun. And one of my favorite songs to play is walking on sunshine because it kicks ass. It's a real <laughs> simple beat, but it just the, the the song just kicks ass. And I've always I've I always loved songs that are like, well, kick ass. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, man. Well yeah, I'll be there uh I'll be there this Thursday. Cool, cool. And man. I guess future Thursdays I'm kinda like on the schedule yeah, to be your guy. Around. They're gonna have some grand prizes at the on the last one, which is I think in four weeks. They're gonna have some some things Shelby American, the car company, is going to toss out some nice oh, cool. gifts. And uh, I believe maybe jackets and things like that. And um, we'll have a first, uh, second, and third prize for that. And weekly, it's 100 bucks, And then se the second and third runner-up get a nice T-shirt. Oh, cool. <laughs> so that's cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's real a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, getting into uh, the end of summer and then, um, you know, fall, just more gigs, more stuff. Uh, tribute gigs and things like that. And uh, I've been working for about two and a half years with uh, Stonebreed, which is an original band from Hollywood. Oh, really? And yeah, and that's a labor of love. The original um, thing, unless it's uh, pretty famous, um, doesn't really make a lot of money. We do make money, but it's not like if you're out with Foreigner or, you know, or some of the major classic rock touring outfits. Yeah. So anyway, I've been working with Stonebreed. Well. I'm just cruising on Facebook today. Look oh, at me go. Okay. Oh, there's yeah. Stonebreed right there. Yeah, yeah, I got you guys right there. Yeah. There you got it. And we've got some tour work booked here the next couple months. Um, and during the run that I've had with them the last two and a half years, it's been really great. We've done a bit of recording, which uh, a song called The Whiskey, which was about the whiskey and experiencing the strip and parting. Yeah. And it was written for the Whiskey. We're one of their favorite bands. And Doing unfortunately, the pandemic happened right when we were releasing that. Because we had uh, my birthday last year, April 9th, booked at the Whiskey headlining. And we were going to video uh, us going to the strip and the whole kind of Motley Crue type video uh, about the Whiskey to go with the single that we had recorded. And uh, the single is out. It's available. And uh, so anyway, but that's that's a another band that I work with that's a lot of fun. Nice. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Here we go. Here's some tour dates coming up for Stonebreed. Yeah. There's some stuff there. Nice. And, uh, so that's cool. All and, the way through uh, November right now. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some stuff. Mm-hmm. And then gonna do Texas. Gonna do Salt Lake City. Uh, they're gonna add a few. Uh, I think. Um, Going through New Mexico, Albuquerque, they're they're gonna make this run right now. I think there's four, three or four dates that are running through Dallas and then Houston and and uh, I think El Paso and kind of a run that's heading out that way. Uh, mm. I think that's in September sometime. Yeah, I gotta look at my calendar. 
<laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on from week to week. So yeah, yeah. that is. It looks like uh, September sixteenth through the twenty first. You'll be mm -hmm. doing a nice run there. Every yeah. single day you're playing a gig. Yeah, all through Texas. Yeah, that's Oof. cool. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be a fun week. Also an exhausting week. Yeah, right? it's grueling. Yeah, yeah when you're on the lower every end, single like, day. you know, not a a major band, but on the lower end touring or doing things, it's it's uh, definitely a labor of love. But I have a lot of energy and I can do it. Yeah. Like it doesn't bug me. And I've been on the road. I mean. In my career, I've done so much work. You know, I, I began in the 80s in Los Angeles, in the Bay Area, and then Los Angeles, and then in the 90s, Austin, Texas, and touring all around there. I've done so much tour work with blues bands and blues artists. And, um, you know, I toured with Lee Rocker for a couple of years in the 96, 97, and he's a bass player from Stray Cats. Oh, okay. And uh, so, yeah, I did a lot with it. I've just done so much tour work that I'm so used to it. That uh, And these days I've been driving between SoCal and here in Phoenix and gigs and looping all over the place. Like Friday, I drove, um, I did a turn and burn. I drove uh, four hours into L.A., played Orange County, drove, drove back, got back at like three in the morning, oh. then got up. Uh, did some practicing, taught a few lessons, and then went to uh, load in at uh, 3 p.m. at Rockstar Bar for the Van Halen thing, did a sound <laughs> check, went home, reviewed some of the Van Halen stuff, and then went back at 8.30 and did that game. I'm so used to all this stuff. So the Stonebreed stuff is, um, you know, the touring with that, which is a little bit grueling because you're, you're either in a van with a trailer or you're uh, maybe f flying out occasionally. But uh, and when you fly out, you rent a car and go to maybe two or three dates and then come straight back. Uh, but with the van, with the trailer, which will be that Texas, you finish a gig at 11 at night and you're driving to the next destination like yeah. right away. And it's like sometimes a six, seven, eight hour drive. Texas in the south is big. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So I, but I'm so used to it. I just love it. It's no biggie to me. Yeah. So, yeah. You guys so. have a, like a driver and a tour manager yeah. and everything like that? You know, uh, I'm not sure about a tour yeah. manager. When I toured with them a little bit over the last couple of years, um, we've gone, like we have a run coming up, which is Vegas and Salt Lake City, and they're going to try to fit in, you know, something else, like one or two elsewhere. Before we would loop around and we would be able to do California a bit, but there's not much going on there. Yeah, they're still they're still pretty shut down over yeah. in California, man. I, I know a lot of my friends over there are just like, what the hell? Yeah. The whole world's opening up. You need to open us up, too. Yeah. So I guess they're going to book super fast there because, yeah. you know, like all of a sudden, like they'll book, I guess. I, I guess because right they're now getting to. something a little bit like we've done um, Stonebreed. We've played the last year. We've done some gigs in Orange County. And uh, and recently too, a couple weeks ago, and you know, a month ago in Orange County, Orange County's been pretty open in a lot of ways. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, we did this gig. We did two gigs in two weeks at a place called Stages in Orange County, and it really blew my mind because I thought it was going to be, you know, we had taken the gigs in February. They said, hey, and I'm like, okay, let's do it. I'm available. No worries. That was when I had nothing, right? Right. <laughs> and so so you know, so I go in, drive in. And um, I go to I go to like Anaheim or somewhere there, and it was this place called Stages, and it really blew my mind because I had on my phone my directions, and I drove by the place like three times. It was a warehouse district, and I'm looking for like a sports bar, in a strip mall, right? I thought it was going to be a a lame gig, right? Because usually with Stonebreed, most of the time. Um, all, all, some of the gigs all go, man, it's going to be lame, and then it turns out great, right? It's kind of weird, the original rock band circuit, right? Yeah. You never know. And so um, so I drive by, and I'm like, I hope I'm in the right town. I mean, it's all, like, dark, and there's, you know, it's an industrial area. There's no cars. And it says, you've arrived. And I look at this warehouse that's, like, kind of beat up on the outside. And it's like a two- or three-story high warehouse. And so... I go, okay. So I pull to the right into the side parking lot, and there's cars parked. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's a body shop. You know how they park cars out at, you know, all weekend? And I'm like, because there's no one around. I don't see anybody. And I go around the building, and I make a right. And all of a sudden, I see, like, some people hanging out at the end of it. So I pull up, and there's, like, a door 
that goes into the warehouse and there's about five or six people out front smoking, you know, a ciggy or whatever and they're hanging out. So I, I, I'm like, so I get out and I walk and I go into the door and there, it's like a cavern, like, you know, the way like maybe the whiskey is or something where the whiskey at Gogo, where there's like a dark black and it's kind of a hallway you know, an entryway. And at the end of it is a podium with a Mater D. And that that guy goes, hey, Dallas knows me, I guess, you know, from Stonebreed, right? And we were playing, we were headlining this gig and there were about four other bands. And um, so I go, oh, cool, I guess I'm at the right place. And I, I go and I poke my head in past the Mater D and the place is huge. And it was like the Whiskey A Go Go, but four, about three or four times as big, at least well, probably about two or three times as big. And it was all black. And there's two stages, one to the left, one to the right. And this band is in, on one stage just killing it. And there's about 300 people in front of the stage, right? Just rocking out. And in the back is a huge bar that's a nice bar. I'm talking wood. I mean, it was a nice area. They have jumbotrons everywhere, you know, the big screens. And they had the soundboard, the mixer guy, his, uh -huh. his iPad, on each one of them, showing him mixing. Oh, the really? Show. It was wild. And and then the That's and fantastic. One, one band plays, and then the other band starts on two stages, and they were nice sized stages. They were, they had lights, everything, nice PA's. And so as soon as one ends, the other one starts. That one breaks down. It's a forty minute set, and then and then the new band sets up, and they do a quick line check, and then that band ends, and then this band starts. Wild. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. I, it felt like the 80s. It was like this place was packed. And, you know, and it was, it was a great gig. And so I set my drums up to the side of the stage, you know, and uh, no drum tech or anything, right? Yeah. And, um, and just had a great time, and one or two bands played, and then we did our thing. And it was just an awesome show. And the thing about original music, too, is people really pay attention. So then they come up and they talk to you about well, you know, that one Tom Tom part you do in that one song is so amazing and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm kind of waxing poetic for a long time about this. So get back to something else. But it was fun. And uh, so, yeah, we've done some gigs in um, Victorville, too. There's a place called Hilltop Tavern that's actually on a hilltop where it's outdoors. And you can see when we're playing, the sunset is happening. And I played with Stonebreed there opening just two bands for like led zepp again i love i know them killer sure. and then about i think it was three weeks ago i played two three weeks ago i played there i think it might have been yeah it was like three weeks ago uh played the hilltop tavern um before bonfire an acdc tribute that was killer oh, cool. and it's packed with people and we go on at like i don't know 7 30 to 8 15 or something and then they go on at like nine or whatever and uh, the sun is setting, so it's just beautiful, and you're playing. And so anyway, there's been some good gigs in Cal, outside of L.A. County, and outside of in the southern area. Yeah, in the desert. Uh, that just reminded me of these gigs I used to do at Beauty Bar, where I'd be all by myself, and we had this uh, inside stage and an outside stage, and they'd be running bands on both stages. Wow, just torturing me all night long. You know, like I'd have to leave the the one band say playing outside halfway through their set to go set up the band inside because I was, you know, I get this guy going, and then they're the band before them's probably off the stage. Go in quick, Mike. You know, get line check and go, and then be like, just stand by for a second. The second you hear them stop playing, you guys start. You're unmuted. I'll be out there dealing with this. And I was just doing this oh back and gosh. forth. I was like, I should have a couple stagehands doing this for me and just be controlling the consoles. Right. But it was just like, you know, that that place never had any budget. It was you know, that was a, a cool place. I played there with Morpheus Black and an original band. Oh, really? And you probably did our sound. It was Yeah, probably. And we played out back outdoors. I love it. I was just talking to Morpheus Black on the phone today, man. How, oh, how's he doing? He's doing good. He's got a song he wants me to edit for him. Nice. And uh, we're probably going to have him on the podcast here coming up as well. Awesome. And yeah, and then there's some other projects coming down the line that uh, He's a that great he I love about. Morpheus. He's a great spirit. Yeah. He is he is the a funny guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't mean to be funny. He's just funny. It's like he reminds me of just, uh, I don't know, a, a classic 
New York comedian who's not trying to be funny when he talks to you, but it's kind of funny. You're looking at him. Like, <laughs> he wrote some great songs. Yeah, he's guy. a hell of a guitar player, man, and he's yeah. very humble about it. Yep, you know, he, he's totally humble. He's, he's gotten yeah. up on stage a few times whenever I was mixing, and I was like, I did not think that was going to come out of you, bud. Really? Yeah, like, I mean, we'll do, like, the Kiss Nights and stuff like that mm -hmm. back at Vamp Days. And, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, he would get up there and just freaking shred. I, I was very seen impressed by him. Years. He, I, I love that guy. Yeah. Yeah, tell him hello for me. <laughs> I will. Oh, you're doing it. I'm sure he's going to check hey, out. I'll send, him the, I'll send him the episode. But yeah, uh, yeah, no, we were working together at Accessibles with Keith Robert. And he was doing oh, the right. Accessibles East Studio Star thing. Morpheus was over there. I was doing commercials for him. So we ended up running back into each other that way. And then, yeah, we've been, we've been you know, communicating again. Yeah. It's funny after the. After the pandemic and everything went down, you know, it's like you kind of have to reestablish these connections with people again. You're kind of floating. Right. And it's just like, oh, yeah. Hey, bud. You know, That's we're right. talking again. So, yeah, it's it's been an interesting uh, experience coming out of this, uh, mm -hmm. out of all these lockdowns and everything being closed and, mm -hmm. and really just like... You know, reestablishing friendships. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely, you know? definitely. It's been, it, it's it's turning out to be pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> ironically, because like in January or February, I was like, "Am I ever going to work again? Really? Oh, Is I this going to go away? Is are people even going to want to see shows? Are they going to get used to not going out?" And so, yeah, so it's turned out okay. No, that was definitely not the case for you know like the second we started putting concerts on like I, I was I was doing some work over at Dive Bar and we did this big festival like ten bands played like everybody wanted to be the first band to play after the pandemic he goes look everybody can just play on the same show and we'll just you know I don't right. have to I don't have to play favorites so he put on this big thing and again it was like bands outside bands inside just mm -hmm. a freaking chaos. And the, the place was just packed. I mean, the parking lot was full of people. They had skater kids to, with ramps outside. And, wow. And the whole inside, you could barely move. That's a cool bar, too. I love I mean, that it, place. It's, 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 it's black, you know, all painted black. It's a oh. good size, nice ceilings, the stage, the way it's situated, and the sound system cranks. Oh yeah, it's, cool. well, yeah. it's cranking a lot better now, man. I've been uh, I've been in there redoing. I'm actually leaving after this podcast. I'm heading oh, cool. over there to wrap up some repairs I've been doing on the yeah. place, and it should be pretty close to 100 percent now. New console, nice. new lighting system, new wedges. Yeah. All the front of house systems been put back together. We'll brand be there new in drivers. A couple of months. Will you? In a month or two, we have a run going to Salt Lake City, and the, the dive bar is on the on the schedule. Oh, so, you're gonna yeah. be very happy. Oh, you good. Got, I can't. I wait. have two. I have I have two wedges on. On the stage for the drummer and one on each side of you so you can really it bangs Sweet. out you can actually hear yourself so those old, right. old blown out wedges that were there forever mm -hmm. and uh and yeah you, you i think you'll be pleasantly surprised at All everything right. i got going on over there Looking yeah forward to it. and we got nate coming on the podcast uh next week he'll be the podcast right after this one it'll be uh nate bruce the owner of die bar who has fantastic stories to tell I'll god bet. damn does that guy have some good, good stories to tell so wow i'm really looking forward to that one, i'm gonna man. check that out yeah <laughs> yeah we i go over there and we start talking and i, I mean we were we're really good friends like i don't even you know I, I don't drink or anything like that anymore but uh mm -hmm. i had so much fun when i was drinking and, and and hanging out at that bar that i just remained friends with uh with nate and remained like you know kind of loyal to the bar just going over there helping when i can just mm -hmm. for the sake of like keeping this punk rock venue alive man yeah and we need places like that where people can go and get shitty totally and i think it's like the epitome of america that's man. like Total the only one in there. town yeah it is yeah i mean you know the double down but that's small and t and and i don't know are they even doing anything there? I don't know, but it was always such a tiny little... I mean, they have a couple speakers in the ceiling, yeah. and a lot of times they, people bring their own equipment to mm -hmm. even do vocals and stuff like that at Double Down. So, yeah. I mean, it's got it's got a similar vibe, mm -hmm. but I've always I've always found Dive Bar to be, like, oh, the epitome yeah. of, like, a rock, rock dive bar kind yeah. of thing, man. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. So, yeah, right it's, it's going to be fun, man. And uh, I really look forward to talking to that that crazy fucker. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's wild. Man. <laughs> cool. I used to get so shitty with Nate. We just, yeah, it was, it was good times. Late the good night old days. after the show, hanging out. Yeah. Doors are locked. Everybody's just cool people and some of the employees and some of the fans and friends hanging out in the bar having some extra. Yeah, that was it, right? We'd lock talk. all the doors down, yeah. 
and just stay have and a get, smoke, and, have a cocktail, right? Sure. Oh yeah, that's just the stay fun. Till the wee hours of the morning. Some of my fondest memories in this business, touring and what have you, is after late when everything is, and they just you know, you know, I used to um, in '94, uh, I was in L.A. and um, the the scene changed there dramatically, and I was playing rock. And so in in ninety four, um, because because of Nirvana and everything, and I was in some slam and rock bands and doing a lot of stuff through the you know eighties into early nineties, and um, and then I could see that I needed to fan out somewhere where there was work. The scene there was changing, and I, I've always been a working drummer, and. Um, so Nirvana changed everything where they stopped signing hard rock bands by like 91, pretty much. Yeah, everybody two. had to go to Seattle yeah. and get a Seattle band. Yeah, and we didn't. I didn't even know it. I was so busy, I just didn't even think about it. I was in a band called Gangway that had come out in 92 to, from Detroit that was really great. They were like Skid Row. They were a killer band, and their drummer decided to go back home, so they hired me. And so, you know, and I was in that band until... I left in 94, and then I went out, I loaded my drums in a rental car, and I headed east, looking for work. That was it. I just, so I went by Phoenix a couple, three days, and, you know, a couple days, and I, I just kept going, and then I landed at Austin. That was my next stop, and I landed at Austin, and I started working immediately, and it didn't stop. I mean, I got a, you know, I, I just, uh, Sunday night, I hit Austin on the Pecan Festival. Ronnie James Dio was playing in the street, another band. Uh, you know, it was a, and, and then there were Sixth Street back then was all blues bars, and I didn't know really how to shuffle, but I learned real quick, <laughs> right? And I began like working. I got my first call. I set up on Monday from Sunday at the Austin Rehearsal Complex with storage and began practicing. And by Thursday, I got my first call, and uh, I got a Hotel Six, and I just you know, Motel Six, and I just and I began working, and. Uh, so it was interesting, and um, so um, that turned into just a lot of other stuff. But the thing is, is back then, um, all that tour work and things that I did out of Austin is kind of what made, made me what I am today, along with everything else. So I guess the, the point that I'm making is that to play a variety of music is a great thing as a musician. Oh, I agree 100%. You know, and then you can bring that that knowledge to the different genres that you play so like playing rock which it, i hit hard and everything but van halen alex van halen has a serious jazz background oh he's, he's incredible young. yeah he swings a lot okay now i don't swing that much but i try and if i land halfway to where alex is somewhere in there it's pretty good you know if you're swinging a little bit so it's interesting because uh you know that playing all that blues and everything out in texas shuffling and then i started doing jazz gigs and and uh that were kind of i was faking jazz anyway getting back to my point which is just that playing all the time wide varieties of music sometimes stuff that like scares you you got some gig and you're like how am i going to do this and then you just start practicing that genre and then a few days later you go and do that gig and you do the best you can right all that stuff leads to well being a great pl player be it guitar bass or drums anyway yeah yeah so no i i, I totally agree with that mm -hmm. point you know like uh yeah. I, I grew up playing death metal and heavy metal and thrash right. and all that. And then I transitioned over like funk music and, and then ended up doing all the Primus ah. stuff that I do. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, it, it, it creates like this nice round basis from which you can draw from whenever you're up there playing. Yeah. As opposed to just having one trick so you in your bag of tricks. your sound and mixing and working with artists, all that helps too, right? Oh, yeah. Because you kind of know what to go for for a certain genre regarding the sounds because all the tones it's not the same it's oh different. yeah yeah it's like um i i get i can be pretty eclectic on the bass so people go like do you play with your fingers do you play with the pick and i go it depends on the song mm -hmm. what are, what's the song supposed to sound like mm -hmm. you know and uh and same with you know uh playing drums and stuff like that i really love playing drums so it's, right. it's you know it's very uh it's a dynamic thing, man. You know, you don't want to just deliver one product all the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But 
I don't know. <laughs> well, I cool. agree. It's I been great chatting, bro. Definitely. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. So, yeah, well, I dig it. We keep it in under an hour. People like the ones that are under an hour, man. I don't mean to look at my watch, but I got a student coming up here. Right Do you? Five, and I gotta go. I'm gonna go set up my drums at Rockstar Bar right now. Are you? Yeah, nice for the for the Thursday gig because oh. I got a lot going on the next couple days, and so the quicker I can get that done, they don't have any bands the next two nights. Yeah. So I'm gonna set up my drums. Awesome. And, um, and then just. I like to do that if I can, set them up in the afternoon or maybe a day before or whatever on gigs, and then I get to pretend like I didn't have to set them up. <laughs> they were set up for me, and I can walk in feeling really good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I dig it, man. It's I dig cool. it. So, yeah, so I'm going to do that today uh, real quick here. Awesome. And, uh, and then I got a couple of students, and then I'm going to go home, and I got to work on a bunch of other stuff. So, well, that's yeah. perfect, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also have to go get some shit done and try to get this, uh, get this bar finished up here so that I can uh, move on to my next project and the All next right. project. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been fantastic, man. Thank you for watching To The Fullest. I'd like to thank my guest, Mr. Peter Dallas. Thanks for having Fantastic. me. Sure appreciate You've been it. amazing. A lot of fun. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the like button. Ring the bell. Go check out our social media. Peace. All right. <laughs> Bow. Thanks for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.